Hello everyone, my name is Lucia and today I'm going to be talking about moment-based constraint spectral uplifting. To start off, let me take a step back and give a bit of theoretical background to spectral rendering and subsequently to spectral uplifting. In order to simulate light transport in a physically accurate fashion, a render must internally represent colors as they are in nature, which is a spectral distribution. By doing so, we are capable of simulating various natural phenomena such as metamerism or fluorescence and the resulting renders are more realistic. Also, spectral rendering has the additional benefit to predict object appearance under varying illuminating conditions. However, creating attributes for spectral assets, like for example reflectance spectra, is tedious and expensive. It usually requires real-life objects whose physical properties need to be manually measured with a spectrometer, which may be quite impractical. Therefore, as they are a lot easier to create, most of the VFX game engine assets are RGB-based, which means that their colors are represented as pre-stimulus values only. To make spectral rendering possible while utilizing these RGB-based assets, a conversion from RGB values to their spectral variants is required. This process is called spectral uplifting, or you can find it in other works as spectral upsampling. Because the RGB color space is intrinsically smaller than the gamut of visible colors, different spectral uplifting techniques may produce different results. While all of the uplifts are correct and evaluate to the desired RGB under the illuminant according to which they have been uplifted, in our case this is always the daylight illuminant D65, which is the white point of the sRGB color space and most of the other RGB spaces as well. However, these uplifts are metamers, which means that under other illuminants, their appearance may change and their color may be distinguished by the human eye. And with the current uplifting technology, we have no control over this behavior, as all the existing uplifting techniques create arbitrary metamers. Here is an example of a render of specific pages of the Mansell Book of Color that is not reproducible with the current technology. On the D65 illuminant, the color gradients on these pages are continuous and smooth. On the other hand, under a spiky, error-prone illuminant, the gradients break down. If we were to, however, use these pages as textures and uplift them with the current state of the art, it has no way of reproducing this kind of behavior. This poses a problem in the VFX industry. There, it is often required to switch between plate footage of real objects and rendered images of their digitized asset counterparts within the same scene. This means that, for example, if you have a superhero movie with a fighting scene, half of the shots may be digitized while the other half may be played footage. As the viewer must not be aware that an asset switch took place, it is extremely important to eliminate even slight color discrepancies between these two versions. For such work, 3D artists currently carefully model an elaborate double of the real asset and obtain a perfect match under the given illuminant. The problem is that, if the scene illumination changes, this process has to be repeated again. Therefore, for a whole movie, multiple RGB assets of the same object have to be created only due to changing illumination. Our approach offers the possibility to constrain the uplifting process with an input set of RGB to spectrum mappings. During the uplifting, these mappings are preserved, which means that for the input RGB values, the corresponding spectra are always returned. Additionally, in order to allow minor texture changes, RGB colors that are in close vicinity to the constraints uplift to spectral shapes that are similar to those of the input spectra. All the other non-mapped RGB values uplift to plausible, smooth spectra as can be usually found in nature. This extension of standard uplifting systems enables the user to predict object appearance under varying illuminants, which in turn eliminate the repeated fine-tuning work. Our model is based on a simplified version of the uplifting model proposed by Jakob and Haneke in their 2019 paper, which is currently being used in the art renderer and which was used as a base for the EGSR 2019 paper on uplifting with fluorescence by Jung. It is a cube structure created prior to rendering. The structure is evenly divided into voxels and contains multiple entries in forms of lattice points. Each of the lattice points has an RGB value that corresponds to its coordinate and contains a mapping to a representation of the spectral curve. Specifically, in the original paper, Jakob and Hanika use a low-dimensional parametric model and are capable of storing the reflectance spectra with only three sigmoid coefficients. The sigmoid coefficients are obtained by an optimization tool by minimizing the absolute difference between the RGB of the lattice point and the RGB that the coefficients currently reconstruct for each of the axes. In order to uplift an arbitrary RGB, 
the original paper proposes finding the voxel that the RGB value falls into and then interpolating spectra at the corners of this voxel in order to obtain the uplifted spectrum. Our constraint model works in a similar manner, but we also incorporate the user inputted constraints. As the sigmoid representation is capable of representing smooth and simple spectra only, we utilize a different kind of representation. Specifically, we use the moment-based representation. It was designed in 2015 by Peters and it has impressive results in representing both smooth and complex reflectance spectral shapes. Although some of the more complex spectra require a lot more than three coefficients, we sometimes have to use as much as 20, the results of reconstruction are almost identical to the original input spectrum. So, in our uplifting model, for each of the constraints, we first obtain their moment-based representation. Now, we wish for the RGB values of these constraints to uplift the constraints perfectly during the voxel interpolation part of the uplifting process. Therefore, all of the corners of the constraints voxels must contain information about the original spectral shape. Therefore, for each of the constraints, we use its coefficients as prior for the optimization process. To preserve the shapes of the reflectance spectra of the constraints, in addition to minimizing the RGB differences, we also minimize the difference between the shape of the original constraint and the curve that the coefficients currently reconstruct. Obviously, as the voxel corners have distinct RGB values, the shapes cannot be identical. What is important is that if you interpolate between them, you get a spectrum that is extremely close to the original one. The rest of the RGB cube is optimized in a similar manner than the method by Jacob and Hanika. So the non-optimized lattice points use the coefficients of their neighbors as prior for optimization. Also, the minimization functions remain identical to those of Jacob and Hanika. This is both because we don't necessarily need to preserve the exact shape of the curve anymore, and that using only three functions has the additional benefit of better time complexity. During the creation, the cube therefore iteratively grows from the positions of the constraints as shown on the visualizations. For the purposes of these visualizations, we utilized multiple constraint sets in form of color atlases, including a set that had only one constraint in the center of the cube. This approach, which is labeled none, is identical to the simplified cube creation of Jacob and Hanika, which was, for example, used in the fluorescent uplifting paper. The results of constraint uplifting show very little discrepancies. Even under illuminance such as FL11, which is extremely spiky and error-prone, the average color error between the original and the uplifted spectra is only around delta E of 0.2, which is negligible in terms of human color perception. The only slight discrepancies that the model shows are in the dark colors. The slight sinusoidal-like shapes that can be observed are unfortunately results of the moment-based representation in combination with our optimization process. However, this looks extreme only because the y-axis is scaled and isn't in the 0-1 range, so in reality the differences are less noticeable. Additionally, in the future we're confident this could be eliminated by case-specific handling. To support our claim, we tested our constraint uplifting model on the pages of the Mansell Book of Color, and we compared our results with the sigmoid-based uplift by Jakob and Hanika. As constraints, we utilized the individual patches of the pages. The difference images, which are relative to delta E3, clearly show that our approach solves the proposed problem. While there are still some discrepancies in the dark area, most of them are minimal and not perceivable by the human eye. The breaking down of gradients, which is most apparent for the yellow-green pages and which we have already been talking about earlier, is also preserved. We can observe this when comparing the original render with the individual uplifts. Under the D65 illuminant, which is the daylight illuminant according to which all patches have been uplifted, there is no difference between the three renders. Under the fluorescent illuminant, though, we can see that while the sigmoid uplift deviates from the original, our constraint uplift preserves the gradient breakdown almost perfectly. Our method plausibly uplifts the rest of the RGB gamut as well. We tested this by uplifting the same rainbow texture with various cubes constrained with various color atlases under various illuminants. Due to the distinct constraint sets, the uplifts aren't identical, which is to be expected with this method. However, no significant artifacts are visible and the transitions between different color families are smooth. This means that the non-constrained parts of our uplift cubes contain smooth, simple spectra that correctly interpolate. Although the constrained spectral uplifting works as expected, there are multiple limitations to our model. The most evident one is the considerable memory overhead. As the lattice points in the cube are evenly placed, but the constraints do not have to be and generally aren't, it often happens that two constraints fall into the same voxel and therefore one of them cannot be utilized. 
For example, to see the whole Mansell Book of Color, which contains only 1,400 entries, we would need a 340 dimensional cube, which is excessive. Therefore, the next step would be to utilize a dynamic structure, such as an KD3 or an Octree, which we leave as future work. The color gamut we are capable of lifting poses another problem. The uplift cube is an sRGB cube, and our model was designed for the sRGB gamut only. Therefore, it often happens that some of the input constraints fall out of gamut, which in turn means that they cannot be utilized for constraining. Even for the pages of the Mansell Book of Color that we used as an example, even under the daylight illuminant, we had to eliminate the most saturated constraints. Furthermore, when illuminating the pages with a fluorescent illuminant, even more patches fall out of gamut. This does not mean that the method fails. It just means that the artifacts caused by metamorphism are less pronounced when viewed on a standard sRGB screen. If we were to view these pages on a wide gamut screen, the artifacts would be more visible. However, even then, we would not be able to exactly reproduce the behavior of the pages in real life. For example, if we were to try and reproduce the provided photographs, the sRGB gamut limitations would force us to eliminate some of the most saturated patches in the last one or two columns of the pages, which are the ones that are causing the most evident artifacts. This problem could be partly solved by creating an uplift cube with a wider gamut, which we leave for future work. Other drawbacks and proposals for future work include the already mentioned deficiency in the dark area and performance optimizations, especially during the rendering process.